Okay, welcome to my channel. This morning we're going to be discussing how to get Section 8 immediately and whether that's even possible, okay? So this would be for emergency Section 8 housing. And, uh, you know, the main thing that uh, we want to talk about is whether it's a fact or is it a mythical unicorn, okay? Everything you're going to look up on the internet is pretty much one person writing an article and then the information gets stolen and republished. So almost every article is almost the same. They just copy each other. And a lot of it's highly highly inaccurate and uh, just a desperate attempt at uh, just pushing out information for, for whatever reasons that they want, okay? So the goal here is to give you some definitive information. Look, for those of you that don't know me, I'm an expert in this area. You know, I, I consult on million dollar properties and I deal with landlords and tenants and <clears throat> I've got a long history, about 15 years, you know, uh, with telling people, you know, what things you would need in order to apply for HUD and have a better chance at shortening the amount of time that you're going to be on those lists, okay? So let's get right to the point, okay? So there are some situations in which uh, you can get Section uh, 8 housing as an emergency, but, you know, I've got to tell you, the process for HUD is long, and you have to go through all of those different hula hoops you need to jump through, okay? So even if you had a situation that was imminent uh, where you needed to, to move very quickly, I'm not sure that uh, you could get the voucher quickly, okay? Because you still have to apply. You still have to have your background checked. They still have to check about, you know, 50, 60 different things. And so unless the caseworker itself at the housing authority uh, wants to, to go through all that information very quickly, if it's even possible, um, I don't think it would apply to what most of you have in your mind, okay? So most people are thinking, you know, I've got an emergency situation. I need to be out of this house. Uh, can, I get a, uh, can I get a voucher very quickly? Look, uh, the people that they're willing to work quickly for are generally not going to be people that are about to be evicted and stuff like that, okay? So what I would like to do is talk about some of the reasons, and then I'm going to give you some examples of both um, – fraud and uh, other things that have been done uh, in order to get these vouchers quicker okay so we'll be covering several examples so if you look here i have a little word sheet and so we're going to talk about some of the bullet points of this all right so senior citizens and the elderly and elderly that are um, <clears throat> that may be in support of housing and they need to move from medical care might be a purpose for them to get a quicker voucher. You know, granted that you still need to go through that entire process and then receive the voucher, then, uh, you know, negotiate the place you're going to, which is not a quick process, okay? Uh, that's, you know, if you're disabled, uh, whether you have a mental or physical issue, you know, I press that issue very hard with a lot of people that come to me about applying for HUD housing. Having mental and physical disabilities uh, goes a long way on how they consider you on a waiting list and so if you were to have extraordinary issues uh, related to mental and physical then uh, it's a possibility now i would like to elaborate on that point okay so what i mean is not really you applying with a mental problem or a physical problem what i mean is the unusual circumstances would be is if you're going to let's say <clears throat> mhmra or the mental uh, state mental health organization for uh, your city or your state okay uh, the caseworkers there uh, could influence and refer you to HUD, which in turn has vouchers that are tucked away under a different program, okay? That would allow you to get uh, a voucher quicker than the average person, okay? But remember, that's the county working with the county because HUD housing authorities are typically run by the county and or state, okay? So that's one, one organization working with another and so that carries a lot of power, and but still, again, you know, it's still a process. Um, the same thing with uh, physical disabilities. Now, the other one that's very important is uh, anyone that's been displaced uh, from a uh, public housing unit does get priority. You're already in the system, so they get uh, somewhat priority, but I don't think that really covers the emergency end of this. Uh, women or men, as well as children, fleeing domestic violence. Now, that does play, play a critical role. If you are uh, going to social services, uh, um, also, um, I can't think of the other agency, but uh, it has to do with children. So I suppose it's social services or um, child welfare, welfare services. Um, they can make, uh, the, count, uh, the caseworker or counselor can make a recommendation and connect you directly with uh, HUD. And um, again, they can pull these uh, additional vouchers they don't tell anybody about. 
and uh, can speed you through the system. And uh, again, I reiterate that uh, it's still a process, okay? And I've seen both of these happen for both um, for both county organizations on referrals. So mental health uh, by the state and or county and um, social services, uh, even for people that are aging, uh, being able to get through the system much quicker than anybody else, okay, on the short term. Now, I want to give you another example here. Uh, <clears throat> there are instances where people manipulate the system uh, through different channels, okay? Had a gentleman that worked for the federal government uh, in New York, and I won't uh, talk any further about what he did, but uh, he had undue influence over uh, the people. I guess he uh, charmed the people at the housing authority, and uh, they were able to uh, come up with a voucher very quickly for a friend of his family. You know, these things go on, and uh, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, the influence of being a federal officer would uh, be able to influence a housing authority, but it did happen, and that person got what would you, you know, what you would consider to be a housing, emergency housing choice voucher uh, very quickly. The other instance that came to light just recently is was in, um, in my own city in Houston, Texas. They... Um, this housing authority was doing a pretty pretty bad job, and uh, they ended up uh, hiring a convicted felon, of all things. And uh, so he already knew the internal system, and so what he was doing is uh, he would have friends and family or anybody that wanted to purchase a voucher for a couple of grand. And so in the system, there's, allowable, or there's an allowable or number of uh, vouchers that uh, are available very quickly. They don't, like I said, they don't tell anybody. So this gentleman understood how that worked and uh, was selling these, okay? Which means that ultimately people were to be able to get them, you know, in a, ma in a magnitude of a couple of weeks or a month, okay? So that's the other flip side of how quickly one might get an emergency voucher. I'm not suggesting anybody do anything illegal like that. I'm only giving that as an example from news, okay? Um, if you have a case of uh, domestic violence, uh, as I had mentioned before, um, you have a very compelling case, then uh, the housing authority obviously can consider those factors. I want to repeat that uh, it doesn't matter if a housing authority's waiting list is closed, okay? There are a number of uh, vouchers they keep that they simply don't tell anybody about, and those vouchers are reserved year-round regardless, okay? So... If you were to be referred by the right county or state agency, then uh, that would uh, go a long ways towards you getting the voucher uh, 